good afternoon students today we are going to study about plastids so plastids are one of the important organelle in plant cells they are basically uh, storage organelle along with that they have some uh, pigments and that pigments are very much useful for different type of functions they perform like photosynthesis attraction of uh, insects attraction of animals so different types of functions uh, they perform using these plastids most of the plastids are used for uh, storage purposes of different macromolecules required in plants so let's start so these are membrane bound organelle in the cytoplasm of plants and algae first discovered by ernest hackel and uh, a clear definition was given by uh, sir afw skimper so basically these uh, plastids um, they are found in plants only plants primitive plant cells as well as um, in uh, eukaryotic plants along with that some very much similar type of uh, organelle are also found in fungus so they often contains pigments that pigments are used for attraction of other organism so we know that uh, plants most of the plants rather most of the plants they require insects for the pollination pollination is very much essential for uh, the repro the sexual reproduction and where the sexual reproduction can occur it can occur in the higher plants because higher plants the angiosperms they bear they bear flowers and these flowers requires pollination so most of the plants they are dependent on other animals or mostly insects for their pollination and for pollination they need to attract different insects and insects will be attracted because of the color the fragrance as well as some to get some nectar and uh, the attractive colors of fruits they attract us right so they are that attractive colors of fruit they attract animals to eat fruits and disperse the seed all around so that these seeds can be thrown very much away from the mother plant and where they can grow easily because if every plant will be in the same vicinity nearby then there will be uh, they they will require more and more of water and nutrition so to avoid that condition plants require dispersal of seeds and along with that all the plants because plants are autotrophic autotrophic mean autotrophic mean all those plants the all those uh, organism which uses inorganic substances to make an organic macromolecule for their food mean using inorganic substances these organism makes their own organic food and that food will be consumed for other biological processes remember that autotrophic organisms means 
plants and other uh, lower plants as well so all plants all autotrophic organisms are the only organism which can harvest the sun energy the sun energy from sun and they can absorb and store it in the form of organic foods and these organic foods are utilized by all the living organism on this earth crust so autotrophic organisms they uh, prepare their food using sunlight and that sunlight energy is stored in the form of organic food and these organic foods are the only source of energy on this earth crust so indirectly all the energy what we use on this earth crust comes from sun so coming further so types of plastids basically the plant cells they uh their plastids comes from pre existing plastids this happens in the case of mostly chloroplast but for other all plastids there is a pro there is a pro plastid so pro plastids are synthesized and pro plastids generally give rise to etioplast and that etioplast gets converted into chloroplast chromoplast and leucoplast so sometime proplastid directly also gets converted into chloroplast and leucoplast and again leucoplasts are of four di three different types so proplastids mean the precursor of plastid so these precursor of plastids if they have colorful pigment inside they will be known as chromoplast if the pre if the pigment what they have is exclusively green green will have uh chloro um, green will have chlorophyll pigment inside and they do an exclusive work known as photosynthesis that what we will discuss is further and uh, sometimes i mean uh, some of these plastids they lacks any color and here the whole plastids will be used to store different types of uh, food and as these lacks any kind of um, pigments they are known as leucoplast leucoplast so colorless one so leucoplasts can be of three different types based on what it is actually storing inside it it may be amyloplast which stores carbohydrate or starch it can be elioplast where fat is stored inside it can be proteinoplast where proteins are stored inside and sometimes different type of secondary metabolites like phenols tannins are also stored inside leucoplast in that case these leucoplasts are known as tannosomes so from here what we are getting we are getting that uh, proplastids can be uh, can develop into three different types of plastids chromoplast chloroplast and leucoplast chromoplast will be colorful it may have different kinds of pigments different kinds uh, different kind of plastids or it can be green if it is green then it will have photosynthetic pigment that is chlorophyll and if they are colorless then 
they they will be used as a storage mol a storage organelle and these storage organelle can be of th three different types amyloplast elioplast proteinoplast and sometime uh, these are used for storing secondary metabolites like tannins and phenols then these are you these are known as tannosomes tannosomes is not shown in the picture coming to chloroplast that what you have to study in detail so chloroplasts were discovered in in uh, the year 1837 by hugo von mohel as just bodies within plant cell these they say that these are green molecules inside a uh, plant body and that what it uh, what is causing plant as green but further in 19 in 1880 1883 afw skimfer can you remember the name just we had mentioned it in for uh, for discover discoverer of plastid he saw these bodies and called them chloroplastids and in 1884 just next year starks burger he gave the name chloroplasts what we call it now so what actually these molecules do these are very much organized organelle inside the plant these are known as chloroplast and these organ these organelle is involved in photosynthesis where the plant uses chlorophyll pigment to capture energy from sunlight and that energy is used for uh, making organic substances so the energy is stored in the form of atp first and nadph and afterward this photosynthesis takes place and uh in photosynthesis the inorganic carbon dioxide and water is used to prepare uh starch or uh, you can say mon uh, monosaccharides and these monosaccharides are further utilized by plant as well as the other animals so these photosynthesis takes place in two different stages one absorption of light and second uh, the energy what is uh, stored in the plant is utilized to um, make monosaccharide so first part of it where the sunlight energy is absorbed inside that reaction is known as photoreaction or uh, that reaction is also known as light reaction the another part of it where carbon dioxide and water molecules are used to make carbohydrate molecules and the process is known as calvin cycle uh, we won't Uh, see the details of this cycle here that we will be studying further in the biochemistry when we will be studying so here we will be confining our structure <coughs> just up to the ultra structure of chloroplast so ultra structure of chloroplast you can see um, a dish like uh, organelle here so chloroplast very much similar to mitochondria where it is made up of two bimembrane two bimembranous structure by uh, membrane sorry sorry it's it's written wrong sorry sorry 
uh, chloroplast is like mitochondria. It's a two membranous bilipid layer structure. It's a two membrane and both each of the membrane is a bilipid structure as we had seen in mitochondria it inside uh, this inner chamber uh, there it contains own its own dna and um, it contains several different membranous structures known as thylakoid along with thylakoid definitely if they they have their own dna they they will have to have rna other uh, sorry they will have to have ribosomes so that they can express the dna inside so they will have our uh, ribosome as well so that they can express the dna what it is there inside So actually one theory is there, what the theory is that cyanobacterium, cyanobacterium resembles very much similar to chloroplast. I am not telling exactly similar, rather it's very much similar. Cyanobacterium uh, get inherited inside a eukaryotic cell and then the cyanobacterium is synthesizing uh, this uh, food for this these type of eukaryotic cell so but that theory is uh, not yet very much proven theory but uh, it is considered that okay this can be happen this can have happened but it's not well proven fact so chloroplast cannot be made by the plant cell and must be inherited by each daughter cell during cell division. What does it mean? It means that during cell division, these chloroplasts also should divide so that it can be distributed among the daughter cells. So chloroplasts, are generally 3 to 10 micron in diameter and 1 to 3 micron thick. In plant, in higher plants, chloroplasts are like round structure. But if you will see the algae, it's very much diverse. You can have ribbon-like cup-shaped, star-shaped, different types of chloroplasts. Have a glimpse on it. You can see in A, B, C, D, everywhere you can see uh, in the first row, it's all ribbon-shaped, even in A, A in E. In C, you can have cup-shaped one, Irregular shaped, different in R, you can see star shaped. So, different shape of uh, chloroplast you can see in algae. These all are algae. So, coming back to ultra structure, all the chloroplasts have three different regions. So first is the outer most covering that is outer chloroplast membrane and then there will be inner, inner chloroplast membrane. There must be a space in between but that space is very narrow and inside that there is a thylakoid membrane. These thylakoid membrane are the active site of this photosynthesis. Thylakoid membrane system is the membrane system inside the chloroplast, rather inside the inner chloroplast membrane. 
So we will see it into detail about each of these uh, membrane system. So outermost is the outer chloroplast membrane. So outer chloroplast membrane is semi-porous as we had seen in mitochondria as well. There also large macromolecules was restricted to go inside and large protein molecules, they can enter inside with a special permission and that permission was given based on a translocon. So here also you can have translocon. Translocons are the protein which actually uh, temporarily it uh, gives the protein its primary structure. So once they get attached with these translocon, the 3D structure gets converted into primary structure, mean the whole three-dimensional protein, they becomes a thread-like structure. And that thread-like structure goes inside. And again, once they get detached from translocon, they again form a three-dimensional structure. So the translocon uh, help in uh, helps these large protein in crossing these membrane and these translocons of outer membrane outer chloroplast membranes are called POC means translocon on the outer chloroplast membrane TOC so as I had just mentioned there will be uh, an intermembranous space and these intermembranous space will be very small just 10 to 20 nanometer in thickness and after this uh, small gap there will be inner chloroplast membrane present and inner chloroplast membrane will have very much strict entry so these uh, inner chloroplast membrane have again they will have uh, translocons present so that if any large proteins are required from outside they can enter through these translocon and these translocons are called TIC translocon in the inner chloroplast membrane so this is how the transport across the chloroplast membrane both the chloroplast membrane takes place in addition to these uh, regulation uh, the inner chloroplast membrane also have different sets of enzyme which actually takes part in uh, synthesis of different types of fatty acids lipids and carotenoids so synthesis of fatty acids lipids and carotenoids also takes place in the inner chloroplast membrane so inside fluid is known as stroma so inside the chloroplast the, the fluid is known as a stroma and outside the chloroplast the fluid is known as cytoplasm so the stroma is very rich in uh, uh, very rich in protein it is actually alkaline aqueous fluid with the inner chloroplast membrane and outside of the thylakoid space the thylakoid membrane system the thylakoid uh, the inside there will be a uh, dish like structures present and these are known as thylakoid so the stroma is present from the inner membrane of chloroplast up to the thylakoid membrane 
so inside thylakoid membrane there will be a different world so chloroplast uh, stroma will have chloroplast dna the chloroplast ribosome and the thylakoid membrane system the whole thylakoid membrane system will be uh, floating inside the stroma and along with it there will be some more things like the starch which is already prepared inside then plastoglobuli these plastoglobuli are the proteins and many other different proteins which are synthesized time to time for regulation as well as for its control are found in the stroma calvin cycle just now we had uh, heard about calvin cycle where co2 is fixed in form of monosaccharide using water molecules this calvin cycle also takes place in the stroma stroma mean the fluid inside the chloroplast coming to the thylakoid membrane system the thylakoid membrane system is found inside the stroma and uh, thylakoids are membrane bound compartments and these are found in is uh, these are found in is top mean they are kept one over another like uh the carambole dices so these are kept one above another so when they are kept one above another these are known as granum each stalk is known as granum and inside the thylakoid membrane there is a fluid called thylakoid lumen fluid and inside the area is known as thylakoid lumen these are the site of light dependent reaction the photo reaction where the energy from the sun is absorbed and are processed so if here the energy is processed then definitely the uh energy absorbing molecule that is chlorophyll will be present there on the thylakoid membrane so always remember many time the questions is uh, are asked about that where the uh, where the chlorophylls are present chlorophylls are present on the thylakoid membrane thylakoid membrane of chloroplast so thylakoid lumen plays an important role for photo uh, for photosynthesis because these actually makes atp using photo uh, using sunlight and you all know that uh, atp is the currency of all the living organism what you mean by currency currency mean these are the energy capsules these are broken to get energy so atp is made in the lumen of the lumen of thylakoid so during the light dependent reaction protons are pumped across the thylakoid membrane inside stroma okay so in the stroma protons are pumped and uh, because of the pumping of these uh, protons so there will be less amount of proton inside and hence the ph decreases inside the lumen of thylakoid and it gets as low as less than 
pH 4. So see, outside stroma, the pH is high. Those are alkaline in nature and inside it is acidic in nature because of less amount of proton. And these gradient of protons are used for phosphorylation photo and as here the photons are used for this phos uh, phosphorylation hence this reaction is known as photophosphorylation reaction photophosphorylation reaction okay so granum two granums are connected with a membranous structure known as granum lamellae these are just to connect each of these thylakoid membranes so that they can um, communicate each other and uh, all those uh, molecules can be shared in between so what is the function of chloroplast just photosynthesis chloroplast is involved in photosynthesis as well as some other functions are also involved just now we had studied that some other functions like uh, some special fatty fatty acid synthesis some protein synthesis all those which are required for chloroplasts so with this we are finishing the chloroplast thank you